Acts 7. Stephen was one of the seven men chosen by the apostles to serve tables so that the apostles could be free to serve the work. Stephen does more than distribute food, however. For his preaching of God's word, he becomes the first martyr of the faith. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city, city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold the sin against them. When he had said this, he died. A reading from 1 Peter. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed <coughs> you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see that I am laying in Zion, a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, that the stone, is the, that the stone of the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall, they stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But are chosen, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy.
Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still have been out for me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do not believe that I am the Father, and the Father is in me. The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. The guardian. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. I, was, uh, I always remember uh, my confirmation. I can't remember all of it, 1965, but I do basically remember it. And I remember Examination Sunday. How many of you had Examination Sunday? Yeah, we're, we're gonna do that again today, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna ask the kids uh, very pointed questions about Lutheran theology and Martin Luther. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> you know why pastors drop that? Because the kids would often freeze like that and not know the answer. And rather than blame the kid, the parents blamed the pastor. <laughs> so that was it. The pastor said, we're not doing this anymore. And uh, I think it's all for the better. Uh, these kids probably didn't know, uh, they didn't know what you had to know in confirmation, right? Memorization, I'll bet you we had to memorize 200 Bible passages. We had to recite them. Can you imagine a class of 44 kids, one pastor, and he had to listen to all the recitations of those things? My gosh, I can't believe that. Anyway, uh, the other day, uh, Scott, sorry Scott, I'm, I'm using you in my sermon today, but he doesn't mind. <laughs> Scott uh, came back from uh, a trip to Mexico and when he landed, he, uh, he called me or texted me, I forget which one it was, and he said, three hours of turbulence. They never shut off the fasten your seatbelt sign. It was white knuckles on the sides of the chair, and it was scary. Amen. And then he asked me, he said, uh, does turbulence bother you? And I thought about it, and I said, I guess when we came back from Costa Rica, we had a couple hours of it, and it didn't bother me. Not to say that I'm a better person, but I said, turbulence in the airplane is a metaphor, right? And I think that uh, it doesn't bother me anymore because I've had enough turbulence in my life that I'm okay with turbulence. I know that the turbulence is temporary and God will get us through. After I thought of that story, I thought of another Scott story. We were, uh, <laughs> sorry, it's better than mom. Mom doesn't want me using any stories. <laughs> uh, we were uh, on a fishing trip up uh, north, Emma Lake. Not a great fishing lake, but we had access to a canoe, and it was a cool day in uh, June. J he and I were the only ones on the lake, and uh, we were paddling along the shore, and I noticed that the wind was picking up. And in order to get back, we had to go through some water that was two to three foot waves in a canoe, and the water started coming over the sides of the canoe. And, uh, and I was paddling hard, we, uh, we were going, and my heart was pounding, and I thought, what am I gonna say to Carol if something bad goes <laughs> Anyway, as we were going through that difficult stretch and the water was coming into the canoe, Scott turned around and looked at me. He wanted to see my face, and I know he saw some concern, if not fear. And he said, should I be afraid? And it hit me. No, you should not be afraid. Just keep paddling. <laughs> <laughs> and we made it. We probably shouldn't have been there at that time, but we did it. And that's the story. But when I think about my 45, 46 years of ministry, 
I'm in my 46th year. There's been lots of turbulence, right? This morning I was in a, a palliative situation at the Pasco Hospital. And I don't know how many hundreds of times I've been in palliative care. And I remember my, uh, the parish that I had in Prince George, one of the first uh, Saturdays I was there, the RCMP called me and asked if I would go with them on a call. And uh, I said, sure. And uh, as we got to this person's house, they, they said to me, uh, their daughter has just been found, 13 years old, brutally murdered. Uh, we're gonna leave you with the family. I didn't know the family, I didn't know what to say, but that was turbulence. And other stories of a 17-year-old hitting a moose in the car after he and his mom had an argument, and on and on the stories go. But the more turbulence you have in your life, and when you get through that turbulence, and you know that it was God that helped you through the turbulence, the stronger you become the braver you become, the more courage you have in your heart. The true metaphor of turbulence on the plane is the seatbelt. They always tell you to fasten your seatbelt. And when you see some of the pictures uh, going around now of uh, turbulence, where everything is laying in the aisle, all of the trays and luggage has fallen, and people flying through the air, you wear your seatbelt. And to me, the seatbelt is a metaphor for faith. Every day, especially in times of turbulence, we have to fasten that seatbelt and buckle it up, pull it tight, and know that God is with you. And through faith, we get courage. From faith comes courage, and we carry that courage in our heart. We had a very uh, interesting year this last year in confirmation, and uh, it took a while for the kids to open up. Uh, basically, they've had three years of COVID, right? Three years of COVID. And uh, I think all of us have had a difficult time getting through this, but the young people have done remarkably well, but it wasn't always easy. This is probably the most turbulent time for some of these young people. Time of turbulence where you wonder what's going to happen next. Is my family going to be okay? Am I going to be okay? Are we going to survive as a society, as a culture, as a people? We did. We survived. We got through. And faith is what kept us strong. Usually our prayer for these kids or our prayer at baptism is that our, our children will never experience any hardships or difficulties in life. That shouldn't be our prayer. We don't want to pray that you have lots of problems, but the reality is that you will have turbulence in your life. That's the way it is. Especially in the next 10 or 15 years, there's going to be lots of turbulence. Do not be afraid. In the gospel reading that we often read at funerals, do not be worried and upset, Jesus said. Do not be worried and upset. I am with you. I know that uh, some of the kids are already in high school, but the grade eight kids have a great deal of uh, fear and anxiety about what high school is gonna be like. And when you're in grade 11 or 12, you look back, and, oh, that's no big deal. And it's no big deal for us, who that's way past. But for grade seven and eight kids who are gonna go into high school, it's a very anxious time. Do not be afraid. Do not be worried and upset. God is with you. Buckle up the seatbelt. Put courage in your heart. And you're gonna have four awesome and amazing years. You're gonna have an awesome and amazing life. And when somebody asks you at age 72, are you afraid of turbulence? No, I don't think so. Because God has been with me through all my turbulence, and I am okay. Amen. The following people uh, have uh, been instructed in the Christian faith and desire to make public affirmation of their baptism this morning. William John Nicholson, Nathaniel Jason Pelzer, 
Chloe Renee White, Sasha Lauren House, Raina Catherine House, Quinn Scott Sullivan Teese, Anika Giselle uh, Leggett, and Zacharias Georges Kalitsakis. Did I get that right, Zach? <laughs> Which name did I get you? All of them? Zacharias, I got right. <laughs> Georgios? Georgios? What is it? Georgios. Yorgos. Okay. See, I'm not very Greek. You know that. Anyway, would you all come up and go to the places that you were in the other day? I need a new set over here. On the corner. And in a few minutes, I'm going to ask the parents and godparents or whoever wants to stand behind uh, the countryman uh, to stand behind them, and we'll do a laying on of hands. Brothers and sisters in Christ and holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of his church. In, this, in the community of God's people, you have learned from his word God's loving purpose for you in all creation. You have been nourished at his table and called to be witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, therefore, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? If so, answer, I do. Amen. Do you believe in God the Father? Uh, we all do this together, Scott. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You have just made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant that God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear his word and share in his supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. To serve all people, following the example of our Lord Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, through water and the Spirit, you made these men and women your own. You forgave them all their sins and brought them to a newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hey, we got all the compliments, kneel on the top step there. Just Quinn Scott Sullivan Teese, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God strengthen and preserve you in the true Christian faith until life everlasting. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Quinn the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. William John Nicholson. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in, in William the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. I think I Father in heaven, for 
for Jesus' sake, stir up in Anika the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith and guide her mind. Empower him, her and her servant, and give her patience and suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Chloe Renee White. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Chloe the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith and guide her life. Empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Sasha Lauren House. Come here. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Sasha the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Raina Catherine House. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Raina the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Nathaniel Jason Helton. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in, in, in Nathaniel the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith and guide his life. Empower him in his serving. Give him patience and suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Um, Zacharias Yorgos. Yor Yorgos? All right, that was up. That was close enough, right? Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Zach the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith and guide his life. Empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. God's peace be with you. Let's share God's peace with one another. Yes, confirmation's over now. It's time to step up and take a bow. You're awesome.
united in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of blood, strengthen your church to proclaim your gospel, even in times of trouble. As we remember Stephen, we give thanks to, for Dicano ministry. Bless all deacons and strengthen them for a bridge building ministry between church and the world. Hear us, O God. Hear us, O God. Creating God, you show your steadfast love through mighty waters, towering mountains, verdant fields, and arid deserts. Protect the earth's diverse habitats from the forces of pollution, erosion, extinction, and global warming. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is Mighty God, your spirit guides us into all truth. Give wisdom to world and local leaders and organizations as they begin, build, or renew relationships. Strengthen leaders and aid organizations in areas needing to be rebuilt, following conflict, unrest, or natural disaster. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is Loving God, you make your home among us. Abide with refugees, those experiencing homelessness, those fleeing war and poverty, and all who question if there is a home in your heart. We pray for all who are sick, especially Richard, Lorna, Marla, Bernard, Erica, Verda, Ruth, Hear us, O God. <laughs> Assuring God, you accompany your people amid uncertainty and change. Uphold people in this community who have recently moved, changed jobs or schools, retired, or are going through transitions of any kind. Lead us in your way. Hear us, O God. <laughs> Renewing God, you gather the saints at your heavenly banquet. We give you thanks for the care shown us by those who have gone before us. Grant confidence and comfort for all awaiting the place you have prepared. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. It was an awesome morning, and actually, uh, to be honest, the confirmation program, I feel, is very important and uh, very powerful. Um, I, I'm not gifted in all aspects of ministry, but I think confirmation is one of the aspects uh, that God has given me gifts for, and um, the kids have learned something, and they've learned something about their faith. They can't recite all the Bible passages that you know, but they know that God is with them, right? That's what's important. We're going to extend our hands. You can grab hands next to each other if you want. We're going to sing, Go Now in Peace.